what's happening everybody uh, welcome back to another video pragmatic addict here great to see everybody um, so I'm gonna be sitting down today talking about the newest uh, shutter film the twin so the twin came out uh, a couple days ago and it's one of those films where you watch the trailer and you're like okay well you know if nothing's nothing else is out maybe <laughs> especially after the release of the seller that was on shutter which uh, I didn't see it personally, but apparently I didn't have to. So, I ended up watching this film uh, just just now, and you know it was just it was a lazy day for me. So I was like, you know, fuck it, I'll I'll watch the new Shutter movie that everybody is saying. Hey, it's not much better than the seller. So really quickly, I'm gonna kind of elaborate on that kind of a of a topic. So I'm really divided on this movie. Uh, really quickly before I actually get into the gist of things, uh, <laughs> I really like a lot of this movie, <laughs> and there's that other half of me and that other half of that movie that's kind of uh, kind of night and day. <laughs> so the twin centers on a couple uh, with a mother played by Teresa Palmer, who you all recognize from the film Lights Out, and this film starts out with this couple who has two twin boys and one of them dies tragically in a car accident and then shortly after we see this family uh, relocating now with one son and trying to have a fresh start in <laughs> Finland <laughs> you okay Patrick Finland and once they move there uh, this boy the one that's left uh, starts making these wishes which we don't entirely know much about we just kind of know that there is some wishing going on. And one thing I, I noticed right off the bat is that this is a really beautiful looking film. Like cinematically, this this film is really, really, really well production quality wise. Um, it's a really well directed film as well as really well acted. Um, I knew that this was Teresa Palmer going into this, but even with that, I was li I literally had to like, like like train myself like wire my brain to like say look this is Teresa Palmer and then there's that part of me that the whole movie I'm just like no it's not <laughs> and I know that like you know Lights Out came out in 2016 it was like what six years ago you know so there's a, quite a gap but like the transition man like it really is just a well acted film I she is almost unrecognizable in this film it is such a shift in roles and just such a different person, honestly, from Lights Out. So I thought that was really impressive. Another thing is that it's got really good sound design. There's these things, uh, these little like segments throughout the film where, you know, obviously this is a story about grief and trauma and it's a very psychological film. And we see these segments throughout the film where uh, the mother, uh, Teresa Palmer, she's having these dreams, these reoccurring dreams about, well, her, her son's, you know, death. And it's, I wouldn't say that this is more like a scary film, but it is a very tense film. It is a very suspenseful film. It is a very psychologically uneasy film. And the sound quality with, you know, with its scenes and with its drama and with its buildup and its, you know, disturbing uh, qualities to it, it did extremely well with as well. Now again, this is getting a lot of kind of like mixed uh, polarization kind of like reviews because, you know, again, this is a story that we've heard before, you know, the setup, okay, well, you know, woman's son dies, she wants to relocate and she's dealing with this trauma and then, you know, the son is this, is your classic kind of, you know, douchey ass little shit of a kid who's got this imaginary friend, he starts acting like a total douche to his family, and we've seen this before, you know, so many times. But what made this film a little bit different right off the bat is that, you know, not only the acting that I was talking about earlier, but, and, you know, as well as like a, the direction and the production quality were extremely well, you know, cared for, but even the pacing. Pretty much everything, at least within like the first hour or so, I was like, wow, this is, this is well done film. Like, where's, where, where, where are we, when are we going to get into the nonsense here? Because, again, this, this setup, yes, you, you, you've heard it before, you've seen it before, but I was like, if that's really the only issue, th this ain't, this ain't right. 
what else are we in store for? But really quickly, going back to the uh, sound quality, yes, like the dream sequences, uh, some of my favorite scenes throughout the film, um, like for, for example, uh, going back to like the sound design, there's this one scene where, uh, you know, she's on this swing and uh, her son kind of like goes out of the picture for a second and it is a really well taken care of scene. It's a very intense scene. It's one that really made me extremely uncomfortable. Let me just roll this clip real quick. Of course. No, look after Elliot, don't worry. Going too high. Please try and enjoy it. Just hold on, it's okay. Yeah! Anthony, I don't like this. <laughs> it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, so it does a lot of things like that where they are very uncomfortable and just they're you just you just don't want to get into it. But you have to respect how well of a scene that was because it really did you know, it's it's a very intense scene, it's a very dramatic scene, it's a very, you know, emotional scene. And, you know, for a horror film, this is this is good. This is good stuff. This is definitely, you know, no walk in the park of a scene. And another thing is like the detachment side to it. Like, you know, this this whole like side of like, you know, this mother going through trauma and the griefing pr process, it felt really honest. I was really, you know, I, I cared a lot about, you know, especially the mother's character, you know, obviously she is the lead, you know, a name like Teresa Palmer, you know, she is the standout of the movie. But yeah, it just felt really honest and I was, you know, I, I really cared a lot for her character most of the time. And, and now getting into like the little more of like the negative aspects, like yes, this thing, does have its hit and miss moments, but really quickly before I actually dig too deep into the nonsense, I will say that like the hit and miss aspects, like before it really kind of went off the rails for me in this certain you know area of the film, um, I will say that like the hit and miss areas, it you know it it it, it does have its you know cliches where it's like you know they have that creepy old lady that's the crackpot of the fucking town. She's actually trying to you know bring some sense into the picture. It's it's got that thing and. Everyone's like, oh, you know, don't trust her. But at that point in the film, I was like, but there's so much good qualities that you just like, yes. I mean, for a film with this plot in 2022, I feel like for the most part, they're doing well with what they can. They're being as original as they actually can. They're getting away with a lot. It, it wasn't a, it was a pretty decent film up to this point. And I will say this now, getting into the kind of, you know, shallower end of it. Uh, the ending is sadly the weakest part. Um, it is one of those endings that, you know, once it happens, like, it really will have, like, the final say on how you really view this movie. It's one of those endings where, like, once it got there, a lot of the film in retrospect kind of, you know, it, it kind of, I had some changed opinions about it, and a lot of the film actually didn't quite make sense, just in my opinion. And also, like, while the film is pretty long, you know, lengthwise, it's like 110 fucking minutes, um, I actually, like, I was, I was adjusting to it quite well. I was like, you know, yeah, it's, you know, it's a slow movie, but they're doing fine. Again, with a plot like this, like, you gotta respect how much they're actually going for. But this ending, dude, oh my god. Oh my god. This is one of the longest <laughs> endings I think I've sat through in a long time. And one, one of the most mixed opinions I have on an ending in a long time as well. But again, uh, final takeaway of the film, like, you know, again, we have seen this film before. Uh, the writing, while I think that it does have a lot to offer, in retrospect, it is another kind of one of those, you know, oh, 
you know, dealing with grief kind of movies that feels almost kind of like a ghost story in a sense. Uh, it is one of those films. But in saying that, you know, you can tell that they wanted to do what they could with a plot like this, you know, in today's time. And, you know, it really shows. It's just, you know, in the end, there is really only so much you can do with a plot like this. But I still think that for the most part, they did, I think, for the most part, what they actually could with it as far as positivity goes. Overall, guys, I think I'm going to have to give the twin a strong 4 out of 10. Again, you know, this, it, it sucks because I, I really liked a lot of this movie. Again, I liked like, the first hour, man. That's, it's, like, it's like half the movie. But again, when once the ending actually hits, which is such an important, crucial part of a film, it really, in my opinion, it just, it changed so much about the film, and it totally just changed the whole layout. It was like a completely different viewing on it because of this ending, and that, that just really put a big damper on the film. But again, for a film like this, with this setup in today's time, I still feel like, again, they did a lot with it, but, you know, I just... It's, it's one of those setups where it's like, it's like, this is a classic horror story. Like, people are, like, they're going to keep making these, and some of them will be fine, I'm sure. But just, uh, it was that ending, man. That fucking ending. But yes, guys, that's going to do it for this review. Um, I'm not going to say don't check out The Twin. I'm just saying, you know, it is a very mixed film, and the, re the responses that you're hearing, probably both positive and negative for this film, they're probably more or less pretty pretty accurate but yes guys i just wanted to talk about this film um it definitely wasn't a bad film to me but and for the most part i do think it's fine but it is a film that we for the most part have kind of seen before many times so guys that's gonna do it for this review um my next review should be firestarter on the 12th which i'm actually looking forward to because i didn't know till recently that this is from the director of the fucking vigil and it's with zach efron hey <laughs> May 12th. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that one, uh, actually. And yes, that will be my next review. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Let me know what you thought of this video, as well as the movie, if you did see it. Again, it is a very mixed film, so I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. Guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care, have a safe day, and thank you for watching.